You are listening to a talk given by Father John Mosher, an alumnus of Mount Angel Seminary, on November 3rd, 2019, at the annual Seminary Benefit Dinner. Your Grace Archbishop Sample, Abbot Jeremy in the monastic community, Monsignor Betcher at the faculty of Mount Angel, Abbey Foundation members, board members, committee members, brothers in the presbyterate, many distinguished guests and invited friends, and brothers in the seminary. I, I'm so new to the priesthood, the chrism still emanates from my hands. So I'm, I'm profoundly aware of my lack of qualifications to talk about joy in priesthood, other than my experiences these past five months have been so intense. Maybe a short, short thought of reflection would be helpful. And, if you'll allow guests, let me speak to my brothers in the seminary very briefly. You're all welcome to listen in. <laughs> brothers, some of you came up that hill just two and a half months ago for the first time, and as you enter into the formation process on the hill, you have questions and perhaps some uncertainties, and you're in your first semester of classes, and you're wondering what epistemology has to do with anything in life. What is Woolman talking about when he mentioned syllogistic calculus? You had forced community days that were fun. And you're trying to find your way in this hilltop experience. Yet every day is part of a formation process that has its formal outworking with the very dedicated staff that minister to us, the many priests and brothers who serve us. You have a spiritual director to help you through that. But in your first semester, first year of seminary, those questions are normal and they're natural. You'll progress in that academic curriculum and you'll be pre presented with a tremendous depth in church history. You'll develop carpal tunnel in Dr. Keogh's class trying to take notes. You'll enjoy these classes. You really will in the end. You'll critique them on the quad walking back to the dorm. That you will do. But in the end, you'll realize how important these courses were. And during your time in the seminary, you'll sit around the rooms together in the, in the evenings and you'll debate one thought or another. You'll reflect on some of the lessons you learned. You'll help each other in these small impromptu study sessions. And you'll take those exams. And one day through apostolic authority and the affirmations of the seminary, you will be called forward to orders and you will be ordained. And a few weeks after that, you'll arrive at your first parish assignment. Your boots will touch that sacred ground and you'll find out that you were very well prepared. Very well prepared. Because in the normal outworking of your tasks, you will celebrate joyfully the sacred mass. When that mass ends, early morning, you'll then head into your functions for the day, and some of that may include some administrative details. Those are important, but not the most important. And then on your calendar will be a visit. Someone will want to come see you, and it could be someone new to the parish and just wants to say hello. It could be someone who has a very deep wound in their life, and they want to talk to a priest about it. And although you personally may not have experienced that same wounding, you do have an empathy and an understanding of what that means and how to speak to them because Mount Angel formed you and gave you an insight into what we call the ministry of presence. Maybe that afternoon, someone comes into the parish office and it's, it's a man who's been out of work for a few months and now he's reduced to living in his car and he makes sure his little dog is fed before he is. And he's asking for a little help. Or maybe it's a couple married 50 years and now they're on the brink of divorce because they've grown unfriendly and, un and not understanding to one another and they're looking for a little help. You're, you're their last hope. Maybe it's a, a person, a young woman with a child fleeing an abusive situation. And you'll offer some insight, but in the back of your head may be this question because it's inscribed above the abbey en entryway, the abbey doors. And it's this question that I've asked. 
And I was humbled by the answer. And the question is, why are you here? Why are you here? Why did you come to this Catholic church seeking help? Are you Catholic? And four times this has happened to me. The answer was no, but you are, and I know you'll help me. Because that's what we do. That's what we do as Catholics. And then you'll go home and you'll go back to the rectory and you'll continue to feast on like a lion on the Serengeti. You will feast on that casserole you've been feeding on for four days. <laughs> it's somewhat generously put there. And you'll try to prepare for the next day because we've been prepared to do that in our courses on homiletics introduced first to us by Abbot J Jeremy in his class and augmented with classes by Father Peter Arteaga and many other professors who help us form ideas. Those little reflections that Mrs. Holt makes you do, that's training for how to develop an idea and express a thought, so don't blow those off. Turn them in early. None of you do that, turn them in early. I didn't either, so. And you'll try to go to bed but about three in the morning, your phone is going to ring. And it's gonna be the hospital, and they're going to say, you need to come over here, Father. And for a nanosecond, you'll think, ugh, again. But because you're a man of obedience formed at Mount Angel, you will get up, and you will put on your clerics, and you will go. You'll be there soon, you won't delay. And you will arrive, and it probably is going to be the case, you're going to ER or ICU, and you will encounter a young family. A mother and a father who were driving at night to beat traffic, and they crashed. And one of their children did not survive the crash, and one of, is in, one of them is in the ICU, and that young mom will come up to you and say with numbness because she can't believe this is happening to her, Father, help me, help me. And that's not in a textbook, but that fills the ethos of the hilltop. In those years you spent there, where you learned the history of the church and epistemology, maybe languages, you learn something about the ministry of presence because we see it evidenced by us every day by the monastic community, by the faculty, by those who serve the hilltop in various staff functions, by the very presence of the people in this room. That's called ministry of presence. Right now, this is ministry of presence. And it really doesn't matter at that moment what you say to that mom whose heart is torn. It doesn't matter. You're there. A Catholic priest showed up. That's what mattered. And with the doctor's permission, you'll go into the ICU and you will anoint that child. Praise God if that child lives. Praise God if the child dies and has been anointed. Either way, you did your job, you showed up. And then with a few hours sleep, you'll get up the very next morning, if you went to bed, and you'll prepare the mass and you will celebrate the Mass. And as you so joyously enter into the words of consecration, you will elevate the gifts and you will say the words of institution and they will be transubstantiated into the real true presence of Christ. And as you set that chalice down on the corporal, you'll realize something really important, that somewhere along the way, in seminary, as a deacon in your final year, or in the early months of priesthood, you died. Somewhere along the way, you died. And what Father Steve Clovis often points us to in Galatians, it is no longer you who live, it is Christ who lives in you. And as you set that chalice down and you look out into the congregation and you see if it's a small church, not that many, if it's a larger church, hundreds of eyes, looking at the altar, seeking Christ and finding joy because a priest celebrated the mass.
and brought the real presence of Christ to them in the Eucharist. That is my five months of experience. And I think these many men who've given their life in ministry that sit here among us, both diocesan and monastic and religious, they can tell many more stories than my short history can reveal. But that's what it means to be a Catholic priest, real presence of Christ in the Eucharist through the consecration and the blessed sacrament. That's what it means. And so what we do here tonight as friends and family gather as we reflect on the mission of that hilltop and how it takes men with questions who walk up that hill and whatever their tenure is, six, seven, eight, nine years, it depends, they leave ready to deliver on their vocation into those churches around this great country. And they, they are men that walk in humility, so perfectly formed to serve because what Mount Angel gives all of us is that humility of spirit, that monastic culture that we're surrounded by, and a profound experience of the real presence of Christ and all those we meet and encounter throughout our, our time on the hill. And you all here, now brothers, I'm not talking to you, now I'm talking to everybody else. You, you all here make that happen for us. You make that happen. Because in that hospital room, it was you who was present to that family. It was you who listened to that man who's living in his car. It was you who made decisions that advanced the faith of somebody you encountered that day. It was you. We become your hands. We become your eyes. We become your feet. You become the presence of Christ by enabling us to be present as a Catholic priest. So thank you, thank you for that gift because that is the joy that I have known and you made that happen. God bless. To learn more about Mount Angel Abbey and Seminary and how you can participate in upcoming events and seminary benefit dinners, visit our website at mountangelabbey.org.